recording. Made. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next LibGDX tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to be looking into some uh, more controller stuff and we're going to be implementing the controller listener to actually get the buttons that the user wants to input uh, to use for directional movement. Uh, so let's get into it. So if you are familiar with Java, then you may be familiar with listeners. Now, if you are not familiar with Java, Java normally has these things called listeners or event listeners, which basically waits for an event to happen or whenever an event happens, it triggers one of these, um, triggers one of these listeners or one of these events in these listeners listener interfaces sorry so um basically uh what we want to do what we're going to do just to start off is we're going to say add listener and we're going to say um new control uh new controller listener now what we're doing right now is called inlining the uh the interface instead of actually implementing it uh some people prefer this method some people like to implement it but I just don't like having a long library of um, methods so um, yeah anyways we're just gonna add the listener uh, make sure that the controller listener is imported and we're gonna add the unlim uh, the um, unimplemented methods so if you check down here we can see that there's a bunch of different things so when they press a button uh, it's going to trigger this when they uh, release a button it's going to trigger that once they connect the controller that's going to happen once they disconnect it that's going to happen and all these methods will be triggered based on the current uh, an event that's actually going to be triggered so um if you notice in the parameters it says controller and it has an argument so it will specify which controller did what well, we've only added this listener to this this controller. So why in the world do we have this here? Well, if we can use the global controllers class to add in a controller listener. So basically, say you have multiple controllers in your game and you want the same input or, or certain input for your controllers, then you can add the global add listener and basically you can get which controller did whatever so you can say okay controller one moved their axis okay now what do we want to do controller one or controller two and so on and so forth so it's up to you if you guys want to do that um now if you want to implement the controller listener you can implement it just put a comma and then put the controller listener and then all you have to do in here is just put this and then uh we will implement it in the methods below but anyways uh what in the last tutorial we couldn't get any d-pad input to work with the uh, Xbox 360 method uh, that's because it's not an axis and it's not a button but it's a POV uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say okay we're gonna listen for this and then if a POV happens then uh, if a POV move event happens then we're actually going to do something with it so we're just gonna say okay if argument two, so if the the direction is equal to POV direction dot north, so if they press the up button, then we're gonna say position dot y minus equals move speed times delta. And so we're gonna do, and we're just gonna run this. Make sure my controller is on, so I don't get an error and let's run this so I am pressing up now note that when you hold up it doesn't move you got to keep tapping it but if you want it to continuously move then I'll leave that up to you uh, it's not all that trivial but if you have any questions feel free to ask me but consider that a little bit of a challenge for you if you guys wanna if you want it to be like free for movement like like that but anyways back to the actual center point of this tutorial so we're going to prompt the user to enter up, down, left, and right button, and then they're going to specify the buttons they want to use for that, and then we're going to be able to move our image across the screen. So what we're going to do is make an array, and I don't know if I showed you guys this, but 
This is a libgdx style array, which is kind of, it resembles an array list, but it has some additional garbage collection features, which will be beneficial in the future. And we're just gonna call this buttons, and we're just going to in our create, we're just gonna say buttons is equal to new array integer, and voila. So this is gonna store all the buttons that um, we're gonna be inputting, and we're gonna create an array of strings which is going to prompt the user what to put in. So I'm just gonna say like press up button, I'm gonna say press down button, press left button, and press right. And we'll just close that off. Just put a brace and a semicolon. I know you can't see that, but that's all us there. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna have our button text right there, and then we're gonna just make a boolean, and we're just gonna say listening. So for actually listening for button input. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, if we're listening, and a button's down, we're gonna say, okay, if button, if buttons contains so if it if it doesn't contain so let's put not so if it doesn't contain argument one so argument one is the actual button and we're gonna just gonna set the identity to two all the identity is is that it just says it's it's just telling us how to compare it if you want to look at it just click control space or you can hover over it sorry and it tells you what the identity basically does uh, so you can read on that if you want and we're gonna say okay if button uh, if it doesn't contain it then we're gonna just add it to our buttons so we're just gonna say add and we're gonna add argument one simple enough and so in our render method what we're gonna do is we're just entering four buttons so we're gonna say okay if buttons dot size is less than four then we're gonna set our listen uh, listening equal to true else we're actually going to be able to move our our image around so, um, what we're going to do is we're just going to I'll say, okay, if, if controller.getButton, so if we get um, buttons uh, get zero, so if you press the first button that you specified, then we're going to be moving it up and let's just copy this paste it here to speed it up so we press the second button then we're going to be moving down if we press the third button we are going to be moving left and if we press the fourth button we are going to be moving down or we're going to be moving right sorry so that's all it's going to say and let me indent the code for some beautiful code so if we're listening, if we're listening for the button, then we're gonna um, get our four buttons, and then after we get our four buttons, then we're gonna be able to get input from those four buttons. So last but not least, we're going to in our render method, we're just gonna say font draw. We're gonna say sprite batch, and we're gonna draw button text, um, and we're gonna say buttons dot size. So the X, we'll just put it at ten. And I don't know if I showed you this, but if you do the gdx.graphics, we can get the width and the height of the actual screen. And we'll say subtract like 50 or something like that. So uh, that's basically it. I don't know if I missed something, but let's g give it a go. So we're going to run it as a uh, as an, the job application. So it's going to say press an up button. So I pressed right r2 so let's press the down button i clicked l2 left button um i clicked circle and i clicked that and my whole program crashed. so let's check out this error uh array index oh yep so this is what i forgot to do so in our font dot draw i knew i forgot something we gotta say if buttons dot size is less than four so we don't want to keep on prompting the user after they're done 
So let's just re rerun this. Also, I think R1 and L1 are POVs, or they're, in, they're either POVs or axes. So uh, you can check that out if you want. But I just pressed four buttons. So my first button for up was R2. My button for down was L2. My button for left was circle. My button for right was triangle. And so there, so the user got to specify which buttons they wanted to use, and um, they're they're all happy campers. So, anyways, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Subscribe, uh, and bye for now.